Mainstream economics often treats the economy like a vast, predictable machine. Inputs go in, outputs come out. The key inputs? Labour and capital. And crucially, it's assumed each factor gets paid exactly what it contributes, its marginal product. This tidy story justifies the distribution of income. If capital owners are rich, it's because their capital is highly productive. But there's a fatal flaw exposed in the Cambridge capital controversies. The very concept of aggregate capital with a big C doesn't make sense. Why? Because capital isn't a single substance like water or energy. It's a collection of heterogeneous goods, blast furnaces, laptops, delivery vans. To aggregate them into a single number, you need their prices. But their prices depend on the rate of profit, the very thing we are trying to explain. We are trapped in a circle. We cannot measure the amount of capital without knowing the distribution of income first. This means we cannot claim that the distribution of income is determined by the amount of capital. The machine analogy breaks down. This is seen in the paradox of re-switching. A technique can be the most profitable choice at a high rate of profit, get abandoned as profits fall, only to become the best option again at a very low rate. So distribution isn't a technical result, it's a social outcome of bargaining power.